Hey y'all, welcome back. It's your personal math teacher, Mr. Boyden, back at it again. And today we're going to be talking about the polygon angle sum theorem. Now that sounds like a really fancy name, but it's actually something that builds really basically pretty simply from something that we've already learned together. Okay, so the way this is going to start today is we're going to start by looking at the triangle over here and we're going to ask the question, if we add up the interior angles of the shape, how many degrees do we get? Well, y'all, we've learned early in the year or earlier in the videos, if you've been learning online, that uh, a triangle, the interior angles, always add up to 180, at least if it's Euclidean, which at this level it always is. Okay, so that's 180. And so you know what? Let's uh, make a table here to kind of summarize the things we're going to learn today. So we're going to be talking about the number of sides in each of these shapes. We're going to be talking about the angle sum. And we're going to be talking about the measure of one angle. And so I'm going to take just a minute here and kind of make a table out of that. And so we have those shapes at the top. That's kind of going to guide us as we go here. And so our first shape is a triangle. We know that a triangle has three sides, an angle sum of 180 degrees. And then a measure of one angle, all we would do is 180 divided by three and it's equilateral. So it is 60. Okay, so not too bad. That's not new. Let's go to the next shape. Next shape is a rectangle. Do notice y'all, I did say up here that these are all equiangular shapes. Now that's a little different than regular. A regular polygon has all angles on all sides the same. This rectangle doesn't have all the sides the same length, but all the angles are the same. So what do we know about that? Well, we know that in a rectangle, it would have four 90 degree angles. So we know that one angle is 90 degrees. Hmm. Okay. Well, what would the total be then? The total would be 360. Now there's lots of different ways to think about that, but there's one that I want to show you right now that might make the next few shapes easier to understand because some people will do the calculator and say, Oh, that's, that's four times 90 degrees and that's 360. And that's true, but there's another way. Okay. I want you to think about it this way. Think about it as this rectangle is two triangles and this one has 180 degrees. And this one has 180 degrees. So this is one triangle. This is two triangles. And so a way to get 360 is we'd be doing two times 180 to get 360. Let's go over to our next shape. Next shape, pentagon. Okay, nice. So five sides. How many triangles live inside of this thing? I'm going to start making uh, diagonals here that go from vertex to vertex. And so look at what I've done here. I've split this up into one two, three triangles. All right, a pattern may be starting to emerge. So if I want to know the number of degrees in the, uh, the angle sum, all I would do is say there's three triangles and a triangle has 180 degrees. So this is 540. Let's take a moment to notice the pattern that's occurring in these numbers right here. 180, 360, and 540. So what's happening here? Each time we're adding on a triangle and a triangle is 180 degrees. So to get the next number in the list, each time we just add 180 degrees. Now I'm going to demonstrate that this pattern holds up for the next shape, the hexagon. If I do the same thing here, how many triangles do I get? I get one, two, three, four triangles. So four triangles, that would be four times 180, which is 720 for six sides. And so now a really clear pattern has emerged because we have 180, two times 180, three times 180, four times 180. Okay. Let's keep going. The next one, I guess then for seven would be five times 180. Let's extend these out. And then for an eight sided shape, it would be six times 180. Let's write these numbers out. This is 900 and this is 1080, 1080. Sometimes we say it that way. Okay. So that's a pretty clear pattern, but I want to ask you something. I want to give you something to try. Let's say that a shape had 47 sides. My question for you is if we added up all the angles, how many degrees would we get? Why don't you pause the video and take a minute to think about that? 
And here's what I'd want you to notice. I'd want you to notice that the way we did this calculation each time, we multiplied by three because it's two smaller than five. We multiplied by four because it's two smaller than six, multiplied by five because it's two smaller than seven, and multiplied by six because it's two smaller than eight. So if a shape has 47 sides, what we would do is we would take two smaller than that, 45, and multiply by 180. All right, y'all, this is why we have calculators. So I get 8,100. That's a lot of degrees, y'all. All right, now how would we do that for any shape? It's basically exactly what we just talked about. Okay, in order to get the angle sum, all we do is we take the number of sides, so we'll call this n sides. So uh, and guys, what n is standing in for is saying like for any number of sides, put in your favorite number there, this is how we would do it. We take the number, whatever that is, and we write the number two smaller than that. So that would be n minus two, like eight minus two is six, for example, or 47 minus two gave us 45. And minus two multiplied by 180. So guys, that's a new shortcut. Now, if you aren't watching the video just for fun, if you're taking notes to do well in class, then you're gonna to wanna to write that down because this is the first half of the key concept of today. This is the polygon angle sum theorem. And what we've done so far is we've looked and noticed a pattern in a concept. So we got the concept and now here's the formula. I always like those to go together. If I just drop a formula on you, it kind of, at least for me, it kind of feels like just I'm doing witchcraft. Like, Ooh, here's a magical formula. Trust me. It's not like that y'all. It's uh, it's like, wow, this is a, a true fact that we can see why and understand if we study it. Okay. So make sure you get that one written down. That's a key concept of the day. Let's finish up the final row of this table now. Okay. How do we find the measure of one angle? Well, how did we find 60? We did 180 divided by three. How did we find 90? Ah, don't write in highlighter. How do we find 90? Uh, that was 360 divided by four. Now I want you to notice, in case you didn't already, where are those numbers coming from? Okay, well the 180 and the 360 are in the middle row and we're dividing just by the number of angles because the number of sides and number of angles are the same number. So that's where those are coming from. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run down the line here, pull the sum divided by the number of sides, the sum divided by the number of sides, and so on. Let's finish this out. Okay, and I'm gonna need a calculator for this. I'm gonna reach over and grab that. So for this one, I got 108. And then I got 120. And then 128.6. Let's keep going. We're gonna go with this same pattern here. So 1080 divided by eight. I got 135. And then down here, oh, this is a big one. So 8,100 divided by 47. That does, is that gonna be a whole number? I don't think so. No, it's not, 172.3. Okay, so how do we formulize that? So to find the measure of one angle, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that number from above, which now we have in a formula format right here. So we're gonna take that number from above, n minus two times 180. And then what we did each time is we divided by the number of sides and that we defined to be n. Or you can see right here, guys, we divide by that number. Okay, because we divided by 47, divided by eight and so on. This is the second half of the main concept of the day. So what this allows us to do, this one applies to any polygon. Okay, and it allows us to find the total number of degrees when we add up all the angles of any polygon. The second one, it works only for equiangular shapes. So only if all the angles are the same. Because when we divide over here, we're uh, kind of assuming that all of the angles are the same number of degrees. But this would allow us for any equiangular shape or regular polygon to find the measure of any one angle. So now let's look at a few examples. Our first one's gonna be here. 
I want to uh, invite and encourage you to pause the video to draw this, and I'd also like you to try it. Why not? Let's see if you can figure it out. Reference the table above and that information up there to see if you can solve this problem. Okay, here's how it goes. Remember, what we want to do with any math question is we want to start by doing things we know how to. Don't worry about what's right. Worry about what you know how to do. Something I know how to recognize is down here we have a linear pair, and so those two angles have to add to 180. So let's do 180 minus 72 and get 108. That means B is 108 degrees. What else do we know? We know it's implied that that angle is 90 by the box right there. Look at the markings. So that means these are both 120. And then how are we going to find A? Well, hold on a second. How many sides does this shape have? One, two, three, four, five. Five sides. I'm going to scroll up for a second. Let's go see how many degrees there are on the inside of any five-sided shape. So five-sided shape, we had said right over here that that was 540 total degrees. And so that's how we're going to finish out this question. We know that a five-sided shape will have 540 degrees. So what I'm going to do is from that, I'm going to subtract these other four. So minus 120, minus 120, minus 90, and minus 108. Calculator time. All right, and when I do that, I have 102 degrees. And so that means that A is 102 degrees, and that's done. Let's try another one. Here's a worded question, and here it is. What's the measure of each angle of an equiangular polygon with 12 sides? Explain how you know. Okay, guys, there's that word equiangular. And let's identify what the question's asking. They want the measure of each angle. They're not asking for the sum total. They're asking how many degrees in each individual angle. Feel free to pause the video and give this question a try. All right, so for each angle, we have that formula from above, n minus two times 180 divided by n. And they told us the number of sides. We even wrote down above that it only works if the shape is equiangular, and they told us it was, so that's awesome. And so now all we have to do is plug a 12 into here. Here goes. So 12 minus two times 180 divided by 12. Now, if you want to, you can go straight to the calculator. I don't. I do the next step in my head because I know that 12 minus 2 is 10. And that's the one I'm going to type in the calculator. You can type the whole thing if you want, but this is what my preference is. All right, and I get 150 degrees. All right, so y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. What this all means now is any time that you have an, an enclosed figure that is a polygon, so it means that the sides are not curved, they're connected by vertices, you can always now refer back to this table. Okay, and in particular, this angle sum line, it will always be true, even if the shape is irregular. We saw that in the extra example right here where not all the angles are the same. It's not equiangular. However, even when that's true, we now know that it will add up to 540 degrees for any five-sided shape. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.